folks, welcome back to an episode of the Liverpool Complete Playthrough Series and we're kicking things off today with Javier Pastore, transfer listed by Paris Saint-Germain and a player that I haven't looked at once before and never really looked at again since that but with the, t the clock winding down, he's the kind of player that I think offers a lot to a team like ours in terms of the, his stature, the way he plays up front. We've got very similar players currently playing in those first attacking two areas, basically Coutinho, Firmino and Lallana play very similar styles of football whereas Pastore a little bit taller, six foot two, a little bit more of a physical presence up there. While it doesn't necessarily have the strength, great agility, first touch, passing technique, a good flair too, lovely vision, can bring other players into the game, and that's the kind of thing we're looking for. So in terms of players to have as more options up there, Javier Pastore could be our guy. We've got we've had a bit accepted for £21 million pounds, and now we're at that contract negotiation phase. He wanted around 190000 to begin with. This is going to be my counter offer. Uh, so if we suggest these terms. He's come back in at 200 grand a week. He wants a team of the year bonus. I'm happy to up that to around a half a million if he gets it. But at the same time, I want him to diminish his demands. Uh, he's currently on £150,000 a week at Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, £165,000. He's gone to one nine five. I'm, I'm going to definitely try and negotiate with him. He's going to be a huge earner at the club. But we've got this sort of money to spend. We may as well try and spend it. We're going to up the agent fee a little bit and then bring this down because I don't want to have to spend like a ridiculous amount on his contract. One hundred and seventy. I'm going to lock this in and take the gamble and see what he says. He's fine with it. He would have always been fine with it, it turns out. Finalise the deal. Huge appearance fee as well on that. But if he's playing, hopefully he's playing well. And uh, there we are there. The other, the other guy, oh, here we go. Grimaldo is the player I really want. I think in terms of left-backs, he's the best option. We looked at him last time. Is it the kind of player we can bring in? Is it the kind of player that they're willing to let us have? They want to be able to sign a replacement first. They've not got many days to do that. I mean, I'm going to go 30 million, make the offer, and that's going to be my final offer. We're not going to go for more than 30 million. Interesting, Milan have a very similar offer on the table. 30, I mean, again, I'm going to offer 25 for, for Suso. Um, again, I'll give them a percentage of the next sale, and then, I mean, I'll let them look for a replacement. That's going to be our final offer with Suso as well. A lot of these offers now have to be considered as final offers. We can't just keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um Ajaria has had an offer, loan offer. I think we're going to accept that, actually. Let him go out to AFC Wimbledon. He'll be a key player for them for five months, so we may as well try and develop him. And there's about four days left of the transfer window. So that's going to be the first part of today's episode. Uh, coming up later on, then, is going to be the game against Watford in the Premier League. A little bit of pre-match analysis, 10 games before, 10 days before it actually kicks off. Um, but yeah, after the back on the back of the poor result yesterday against Bournemouth, losing 1-0 away, I mean, this Grimaldo offer just isn't going to happen. I'm not going to spend that amount of money. In terms of left-backs, it's looking more and more likely that we're going to have to be settling for um, for what we've got. I don't think we're going to be bringing another centre-back. It doesn't look that likely at this stage. Uh, a, few, a few little add-ons here. If he does certain things, right, 20 goals and 2 million, I'm not too bothered about. After League of Princes, another 2 million. We'll bring this down to 24, and I will accept, by and large, most of that and make that offer per league appearance by the way hang on that's a sneaky little one that's snuck in there get rid of that and make the offer i think it comes to 28 million for a player that liverpool sold for 950,000. Oh, this is going to be quite painful uh joe gomez by the way a player i would love to get back into the squad and uh, have as an option it's another reason why we're not really pressing really hard for a center back of course we could still go back in for jason murillo that's something that's got to be on my mind um the suso offer has been accepted rising to 28 million i mean you think about liverpool let him go for just under a million i'm now trying to buy him back for a huge amount i think attribute wise to play on that left hand side to be another option off the bench we don't have many of them he's going to be the, the, the perfect foil to uh to someone like manny or, or uh Baldo Kieta. if they're not working out Suso comes in and does the job. In terms of promises, he wants to be a key player. I'm going to say first team. He seems happy enough with that. Um, so, finalise promises. Negotiate contract. This is going to be interesting. Oh, this is going to be interesting. He's only on 29,000 at Milan, uh, which means I don't really want to go any higher than like 65. So, with that in mind, we're going to lower a lot of these. A lot of these demands are outrageous, uh, Suso, mate. This, this, just absolutely outrageous. He wants certain wages after becoming an international. We're going to lower that down to 100,000 and lock that right in. Uh, 10 games for, for Spain, you can have your 100 grand a week, but... Until you hit that, which at this stage is probably pretty unlikely. They're still pretty stacked in that area. You think about players like Isco and whatnot. Uh, Suso is quite down the pecking order. Well, I'm happy to like give bonuses. I'm always be, being the, the sort of person to give bonuses when applicable. Uh, Premier League, if you win the Premier League, you can have 
you can have all the money in the world. Although, again, it doesn't look that likely this first year in particular. It doesn't even include the first year. Um, if he's on a new sub, we'll put that up as well. So if he's not playing, he's going to be disappointed to put that to 10,000. See what he says then. I don't think he's going to accept this somehow. No. Uh, okay. Well, he's trying to negotiate that. We're going to get rid of it completely. The sell-on fee percentage as well. Get rid of that. Don't want to see it in my face. These fees are big. 3 million agent, 3 million signing on. His wage remains the same. We'll go to 70 and lock these three in. It's not a big, oh, if he doesn't accept it. I'm trying to force him into it, essentially. And he's negotiated all of those things and come back at me. Now, obviously, he wanted a lot more wage. He wanted 90 grand a week. I'm going to offer him a 5% yearly wage, actually 10% yearly wage rise. And then everything else I'm not too bothered about. I actually think that's okay. International cap bonus, not too much. Appearance fee, quite hefty. But if he's playing for me, then appearance fee is not too bad. Team of the year bonus as well. We'll up that. If he plays well enough, he can have it. That should be enough to sweeten that deal. It is. I think Suso, bringing him back to Liverpool, isn't that bad a transfer. Genuinely don't think that's too bad. Obviously, they're going to have to try and sign a replacement. This might not happen. This is a bit of deadline day drama for us now. Uh, okay, we've got Ajaria again, still wanted on loan from a few different teams. We'll accept any loan offer for him and any youngsters that are offered contracts or loan deals towards the end of the season. Right, transfer window closes today, 31st of August. Bit of crunch time for us. Are we going to get the players we need? Are we going to go in for anyone late? I guess Suso and Pastore the two players. I love this, by the way. I'm going to get so much criticism for this in the comments. Spent all summer looking for left-backs and centre-backs. Final day comes around. I'm signing a winger and attacking midfielder. I mean, the one area we don't necessarily need players. Um, we'll take part in deadline day. Is there still room to bring a centre-back? These are the transfer-listed players at the back. Do we bring Martin Kelly back? Are we making it a bit of a reunion? I don't think we are, you know. I think I'm going to just be happy with the Lovren Matip thing for now. I don't think I can get any. I don't think I can get a drastic improvement on Dejan Lovren. Is the simple fact of it. And Joel Matip just signed. I want to try and give him as many games as possible this first season. I don't. I don't think I can. Is the simple answer. I don't think I can. I think Clavan's a decent backup if called upon. I, it's. I've come to the conclusion it's not worth it. No left back has been good value so far. Like I, I don't really know what to do in that area either. There's what actually. Do you know what? I'm going to go back to uh to. Kolasinic or Kolasinak is that you said it? Uh, this guy, yeah, yeah, this top one. We're gonna go back in for him. I don't know how much this is gonna cost me, but we're gonna go in straight away, ten million, make the offer. See what he says. That's what we're gonna do. Uh, I mean, it's deadline day, isn't it? So we'll see. They've negotiated the deal. Ajadi is off. Pastore looks like he's coming in. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Thirty million and some sell-on fee percentage. Forget that. We'll do. We'll do eleven and a half. I'm going to suggest terms. They've accepted that. It looks like we're buying the left back as well. All of a sudden, it's kicking off on deadline day. Pastore, uh, I think this is a deal we're going to do. 59 million of the budget remaining. Uh, I think it's the right move. I think it's the right deal. Javier Pastore coming in. He's just that. I like him. He's, I'm making it happen. Pastore comes in that Liverpool then. Klasenik as well. 70 grand a week. We'll bring this down to around 60. Signing on fee. Everything else seems to be fine. We'll get rid of that. So we'll sign, uh, sell on fee percentage though. So, uh, it's, the speed of this series has suddenly uh, gone up a notch, hasn't it? We'll go to 65. Uh, agent fees quite a lot. Again, there's some big old fees we're paying. But as a club like Liverpool, you kind of have to accept that. We've got a left back. We've brought in, we're bringing in Saeed uh, Kolasenak. If I'm saying it wrong, I'm sorry. Physically fantastic. We looked at that market. Those marketing and tackling stacks are what are doing it for me, if I'm completely honest. Um, okay, Pastore is in. He's not quite... He, doesn't, he hasn't got English. So we're going to have to get him to learn a bit of English. I think Pastore at Liverpool is a great little sign though. And there's the left back. In he comes as well. Um, obviously, we're still waiting on the Suso, the Suso deal. It will depend on if they sign a right winger. I mean, we'll see, we'll see what happens throughout the rest of the window. I'm not really talking to any press at the moment. Uh, in terms of financials, by the way, we're still 100 million, so we're good for that. 42 left to bring in a final player. That final player looks like it's going to be Suso. Karius is out with an injury. Shoulder, damaged shoulder, I think that was. Um, is there going to be a little bit of late drama? I mean, we're not, we're not any bids for anyone. Our transfer window overall has been pretty good. We've got rid of a couple. We've brought in a couple. I mean, are we going to see any late drama? Are Milan trying to bring in a winger? If they are trying to bring in a winger, who are they trying to bring in? Do they want someone that I've got? I mean, <laughs> could I tempt them with anyone? I don't think I could. I don't think I've got anyone I could tempt them with. Um, right, in fact, let's go to Milan. I'm just interested to see what Milan are doing. I feel like we all are secretly, aren't we? What are Milan up to then? 
transfer centre. We can't see anything. Carlos Bacca apparently is going to Manchester United. Liverpool are still... I mean, they're not... From what I can see, they're not really doing, any, doing anything. There's not much time, Milan. Get a move on. Uh, I've been sitting here waiting. Okay, we'll carry on. We'll see what happens. Suso deal falls through. Milan failed to get a replacement. So Suso, the deal that never happened, that we'll always remember. It's a bit kind of whatever -y because we've brought in a player like Pastore I'm not as bothered but I guess on the reverse of that it is disappointing not to get one of your targets right um okay so Klasenak is in at the back seed we might have to call him for now so people don't get annoyed uh and then we're gonna have to register Pastore in fact we'll register all of these guys I think we can do just to be safe yeah we will there we go and Joe Gomez uh actually no they're okay they're under they're under the 21 restriction right then all those players are registered signed up very happy Brentford wants Shayoja. I don't think I can let him go at this stage he's, he's still an option if required how close were you to signing Danny Rogues I don't think we we're ever really close on that one let's just be honest never close to signing Rose um as the roundup is complete then Daniel Story is the biggest transfer of the summer obviously leaving to go to Tottenham uh, if we take a look at our overall f uh, transfer business then Storage went out, as did Adam Bogdan, a few loans there as well, and brought in then Kieta Balde, Herre Pastore, and Seed Kalasanik, uh, Klasanak has come in. I'm, I'm relatively happy with the business we've done. I think the players we've brought in are all capable of being starters. We've spent 61 million, we've sold 36 million. The storage one is a bit of an interesting one, because obviously he's not quite the player he was a few years ago with Luis Suarez and Raheem Sterling, but... He might be good for Spurs. It'll be interesting to see if he plays more than Harry Kane this season. Uh, right then, that concludes the transfer window. Uh, although this is a complete playthrough, this is just an international break. So I'll see you for the Watford game on the other side of this shortcut. Okay, folks, welcome back to Watford. The international break's gone well. Really, really well. And all of a sudden... The transfers we've made look like very good decisions. So let's go through them one by one then, shall we? Jordan Henderson out for three to four weeks with a sprained ankle after England duty. Thank you for that, England and Gareth Southgate. Sadio Mane wants three days with a twisted knee, so we'll miss the game today. Not a long injury, but still really pig and annoying. And Roberto Firmino out for five to nine days with a calf strain. We'll miss this game. We'll probably miss the next one as well. Ah, international breaks. Don't you just love them? So that means then we're going to have to make a few changes in a few different areas to the to the team going forward then. Uh, Adam Lallana is going to come back into the side and replace Roberto Firmino on the right-hand side. Javier Pastore is going to come in for Sadio Mane. Not a natural winger. In fact, actually, him and Lallana switching around might make more sense. We will do that. Uh, and then in the middle, we've got, an op we've got a few options, really. Do we play uh, Jorginho Wijnaldum right-sided? kind of a bit more athletic in the middle or do we play James Milner more experienced head probably a better in terms of a box-to-box -box midfielder I think we go for the more experienced head in James Milner a man that knows how to win Premier League titles did so with Manchester City and then this is the team we're playing today then a little bit more yin and a yang up front uh, the one change we're also going to make and all we had it already have made Taken off at exploit the flanks and try and changed it up to play out of defence. You might remember last episode, I was quite critical of the way that we were lumping the ball forward and losing the ball so very often. Uh, if we can get it into these midfield too, and they can distribute it to the Lalana, uh, the Lalanas, Pastores, Coutinho's, and Baldes of this world, then we should fare slightly better. We'll just make that quick change on the bench, bring Lucas in for. Uh, oh no! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! There's another change we have to make. Saeed Klistenak is going to come in as well uh, at, at left-back. I'm probably saying his name really, really wrong. It's just occurred to me also, by the way, that Joel Matip is not entirely fit for this game, which is interesting, because does that mean we should probably play Clavan instead or give Matip at least the first half and see if he gets on? I think that's what we'll do. We'll give him the first half, see if we get on. At home to Watford, then submit this team. Uh, and Most things stay the same apart from the one or two changes that we've uh, brought in. Oh, but Pastore can't even have his number, which is a bit annoying. Do we give him the number eight? I don't think he's quite yet earned the number eight. So we'll go 26 and three for our left back. Cause that's just, that just is what it should be. Left back should be number three. Right back should be number two. That's just, that's just the way it should be. Okay. That's the, there's no, too many debate there. That's just what it should be like. Right then, Watford. So currently, We've won all three games in the league this season. Uh, they've played anyone decent so far? Sunderland, Leicester and Burnley. So games that, you know, not necessarily are given wins, but are good wins. So there'll be a side full of confidence. On the reverse of that, I mean, look at our recent fixtures. Uh, apart from a win against Burnley in the league and a win against Fulham in the Cup, a draw against West Ham on the opening day and a 1-0 defeat. A Bournemouth. Okay, let's move on. Okay then, Liverpool versus Watford. They're playing a relatively deep formation. Niang and Zarate up front. We've got Watson, Barami and Pereira in the middle. Dangerous players in this size. Um, 
uh, yeah, probably four players that I'm actually a little bit wary of, especially Pereira, I think, could be a real problem in the middle. Um, team slot-wise, we're going to stay calm for this one. Home game, uh, we're favourites for this. Go out there and give the uh, fans a performance to cheer for. No one seems to have cared, but I've got faith in you. Go out there and make the difference. Hopefully that will turn it around a little bit. It hasn't. Right, we're sticking with then the 4-2. Four formation, little bit of change up in personnel. Then Pastore's debut, Saeed's debut as well. Lalana comes back into the side, so lots of little changes due to the injuries to Mane, Firmino, and Jordan Henderson. And we kick things off. Then Pastore gets us underway. Can we bounce back after the dreadful result against Bournemouth? Um, that's the, that's the hope and dream for today. Uh, interestingly, in the league table, Manchester United very similar starts was as have Manchester City so far. I think both of those sides have had uh, a win, a draw, and a loss, which is obviously identical to what we've had. Early stages here, not much happening. Um, I'm hoping that our distribution from the back is the telling thing today. As half an hour is on the clock, Manchester United could tune up, and we are still doing nothing. Uh, there's going to be a chance, though. We'll stick with this. We'll see what comes of it. I know Shan does really well to bring the ball down. Plays it out to Klein on that right-hand side. Forward to Lalana. And Pastore is on it now. If you can find a little ball through, the run came from James Milner. Milner slides it through to Coutinho in the, in the dangerous attacking area. Pantilimon dives away to his left-hand side, puts it behind for a corner. We've got some taller players now, thinking about Pastore being in there. Coutinho to put it in. Obviously, Matip's on the pitch as well as Lovren. Ball's played in for Coutinho. Doesn't beat the first man. Awful corner. It's like James Milner was taking them as uh, Saeed heads down to Milner. And maybe this attack isn't quite over yet. Lalana out to Coutinho. He's got a few runners. He'd probably have to go back to Klein, tries to put it in. Never, never an option. And uh, now Watford are going to bring this away. If this results in a Watford attack, I'm going to be very dismayed. It hasn't. The highlight's over. Matip, though, said pre-game he wasn't really fit enough for this one. We've got Clavon on the bench. That's probably going to have to be the change. I feel like at this point in the season, four games in, halfway through our fourth game, and we still haven't necessarily had our best starting eleven out there at any point, which is really frustrating. Uh, right, this isn't going as planned. Nil nil against Watford. This whole four two four system thing isn't going great. We're going to get more attacking though for the for the second half of the half. Take it off fluid as well. Go more flexible and um, assertively say. I'm going to say they've been unlucky, which isn't true, but I'm trying to make them think, oh, okay, maybe just things aren't going our way so far, and uh, we're going to try and give that the vibe across the whole team. Who looks switched off there? Lalana and Pastore. Great start to their careers here, boys. Well done, folks. Uh, okay, straight back out there, second half. Any little changes we can make? We're going to close down more. We're going to try and put, force Watford into a few more mistakes. Um, I've not taken Matip off yet. I mean, that was probably the time to do it if we're going to do it at all. We'll see... We'll just see how he gets on. We'll, if he goes below 60, I mean, he will do eventually. That's when we'll make the change. I mean, he's on a 6.5, actually. He's not even playing well. We may as well take him off now. Uh, Clavan can come on, and we'll just change him and Lovren round based on what foot they are. Uh, Clavan's left-footed, Lovren's right-footed. I feel like that makes more sense. Okay, second half. More attacking. Hopefully more aggressive. Like, closing downs now improved, hopefully. Um, and with the attacking talent out there... You would think we would create something, wouldn't you? Something, surely, to come in the second half. Um, apparently, my Shan's in trouble. He's picked up a bucket in the middle. Not ideal, but not a disaster. Um, Keita Balde, so far, creating little to nothing. Adam Lalana so far, creating little to nothing. I'm, t I'm debating changing the rounds on either wing. Simple change, but if it's not worked in that first half, maybe a switcheroo. We'll, uh, we'll help things out. We're barely creating anything, is what I'm taking from all of this. 20 minutes to go. I feel like a striker's needed. We're going to take Lalana off, bring on Divakarigi and put him up front. Uh, Casino is going to come out to this left-hand side. Pastore is going to go to advanced playmaker. We're changing things up pretty dramatically for the final 20 minutes. Essentially, at this point, folks, I just want us to score a goal. Uh, Wijnaldum's also going to come on in the middle for Milner. And fresh legs in the middle. I mean, 20 minutes. 20 minutes. It's going to be such a disappointing result to draw nil nil to Watford, especially coming off the back of that defeat to Bournemouth. I mean, come on now, folks. We've not got long left. 15 minutes, 10 minutes. And uh, it's actually well, it was Watford on the attack. We win it back, though. Now, Clavan plays it into Wijnaldum, finds Emre Shan. Is there an option out there? Shan with a nice ball out to Balde. Now, if he can run at the defence, this, this is the first time we've seen him do this in a Liverpool shirt, it feels like. Sprinting at them. Slide tackle comes in, avoids the first one, takes on a second man, plays it into the middle. Wijnaldum, about 30 yards out, plays it into the feet of Divock Origi. If I can spit it out, Klein lays it back to Balde Keita. Origi's up there. Oh, it's such a good opportunity. 
Well, we created something. Origi couldn't quite finish it off. And as, again, as the time ticks away, it's a corner to Liverpool. Coutinho, ball in. Who's rising highest? It's Blitos for Watford. And maybe this will result in a counter-attack for Watford, which would be very, very scary indeed. Pereira bringing it forward. Emre Shan comes across despite being on the yellow card and intercepts, though. Pastore now into Coutinho. Options for him. And he finds it back to Pastore. Pastore, runners ahead of him. The slide challenge comes in. He evades that. Actually, no, he doesn't evade that. Watson, already on a booking. Looks like he's going to be sent off. I mean, he slowed everything down there, which is a bit frustrating. And there he is then. Watson's off, down to 10, but with only five minutes to go. I mean, Watford probably aren't going to change how they're playing. They're going to be equally as defensive as they have been already. And the time is ebbing away. 20 seconds. I mean, it's going to go out. Binion should might as well shoot from there. Clavan with a turn. Obviously, we're playing out from the back, which in the second half probably hasn't been ideal. Shan into Wijnaldum. I mean, we're not acting as if we have to score a goal here, folks, are we? Retained possession is not going to be something I'm going to carry on with if it's like this every single game. I mean, we're having more possession, but what is it worth? As a nil-nil comes in, and a little bit of a struggle in this save so far, which, you know, is fair enough. Like, I find this sort of thing the most interesting. When you're, when you're not winning, I've said they're unlucky. That's just not true. Look at that, though. I mean, Watford have come to Anfield, and I've, and I've had more shots than us. They've broken down the game with lots of fouls. Yeah, they've had a man sent off, but they've come away to Anfield and got a point in their toughest game so far this season. I mean, if you'd have said to them at the start of the season, you'll have 10 points after your first four games, they would have no doubt taken it. Speaking of the number 10, we sit down there then in 10th position. I mean, it's still very tight. You look at the teams at the top, they're probably not going to be there coming into the, the season. Southampton, Bournemouth, Watford, I'm on about Spurs, Arsenal, United, you'd probably expect to be there. We have to start winning games, though. That's the problem. Uh, next game is coming up against Stoke. We've still got quite a kind run. Ideally, we're like, I mean, <laughs> I'm thinking about this more and more, right? The games in which we're struggling with are the games that, by and large, Liverpool do struggle with. There's some interesting runs coming up later in the season. The Manchester club's back to back as well. Uh, next episode, then, Stoke will be the game for us. Uh, so tune in for that. But if you've enjoyed this episode, please do leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you thought of the transfers, tactics. I'm sure you will. And uh, there'll be another one of these tomorrow morning. So we love with care. From Until next time, I'll see you again very soon. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.